Logic Pro for iPad has just received an update to version 2.2.1, but before you get too excited, there's nothing amazingly new or shiny in this update. It is indeed stability improvements and bug fixes. But if you're updated to 2.2, you may have come across some issues, especially with multi-plugin, multi-output plugins and things like side chaining. So apparently that has now all been fixed. So if you're on the fence about whether to update, 2.2.1 seems like a good deal. So to update it, just go into your App Store Store here, search Logic Pro for iPad and jump on in here. You'll have a little update button. I've already just updated mine and now it's ready to go. Just hit open and the new version will be ready to rock and roll. Now, as I mentioned, there's not a whole lot of information there. Yep, there's what's new for, for Logic Pro for iPad. Um, it's asking me to download the four packs again. It does this sometimes because sometimes there's updates to the packs and instead of updating a little bit, it seems to update it all. We'll go with it for now. So let's uh, jump into a project here we'll just load it up and make sure that everything is working and then we'll look at all of the things that have actually been changed here so here's everything uh, all still looks the same acts the same you still got things like your cool midi learn that we had added in in the last version so we're ready to rock and roll let's now come over here and take a look at our release notes. So this will be linked in the description as well if you want to look at this in more detail. What is new in Logic Pro for iPad 2.2.1? Stability and reliability are always important. Resolved an issue where Logic could quit unexpectedly when opening a multi-out or AUV3 plugin. Not fun. Now fixed. Resolves an issue where Logic Pro would quit unexpectedly after repeatedly recording in a project that includes a step sequencer. Not fun if you like your step sequencer. And Logic no longer quits unexpectedly when the replace the to switch to a different software instrument. Ah, using replace. Yes, I did come across this one. So if you don't know what that means, when you're here in Logic Pro, if you're using software instruments like uh, this one here, and you come over here to, to use the replace mode to actually replace them. Let's see if we can load this up, the browser. So this one here, where will just replace them straight away. So instead of dragging it across, you just tap this one and it changes the instrument. Sometimes that would cause an unexpected crash and crashes are never good, especially when they're unexpected. MIDI controllers. So they got highlighted in the new version of Logic Pro for iPad 2.2. You can now use the numeric keypad to set a value of the assignment of the details. Didn't know you couldn't do that, but now you can. Uh, undo and redo from the assigned MIDI control now works as an ex expected with track creation and recording, which is great if you're using a MIDI controller for undo and redo, because who doesn't use undo quite a bit? I sure do. The MIDI Learn panel now reliably shows controls assigned to the channel EQ. That's a good thing. Hadn't come across that one, but that's good. Down here into plugins, AUV3 plugins set to use multiple outputs now work correctly. Can I get a hallelujah? I know that was something that was uh, bugging a lot of folks, especially on some of the forums that, I've, that I frequent, and uh, now it has been fixed. It's why I always say, look, the, the dot one releases after a big release are usually the more stable. If you're ever on the fence about updating, you can usually wait for that dot one. Uh, the rate control in the arpeggiator plugin and the bow rate in the sample alchemy no longer show a percentage symbol after the value hey quality of life it's fixed uh mixer the side chain menu is now available in auv3 plugins yay hooray i don't use a lot of side chaining but i know many people that do and uh, the ability to now be able to side chain just as you did before here in the mixer uh, in in logic pro for ipad is a good thing um thank you for fixing that one. Uh, and this is, look, just a quick aside here while we go through this, this is a reason why you always log your suggestions, but also your bugs. Make sure that if you're having an issue with a piece of software, any app, any plugin, log a ticket with the developer, in this case, Apple. They have a page, you go there, you tell them your specs and you log your ticket because if no one does it and we all just complain and yell into space, nothing's going to happen. If Apple get a whole bunch of feedback about these issues, which they certainly would have, uh, when it came to side chaining, then these things could actually get fixed. Automation MIDI 2.0 values are now displayed correctly for automation points, good stuff. Stem separator no longer introduces a sample shift with 48 kilohertz files. So I tend to use 44, 4.1 kilohertz for most of my files, so I hadn't come across this, but good to know that you're not going to get some of those weirdness because, yeah, there's often some weirdness between 44.1 and 48 kilohertz. If that means nothing to you and you haven't had it, that's good. It's now fixed if you ever do. Uh, and general, fader values are now displayed correctly in the control bar while adjusting the fader in the mixer. So that just means that when you're here and you're adjusting things here, up the top there, see how it actually changes there? 
that there was an issue with that. It wasn't displaying the correct values. Now you get a big display and it's actually really handy. If you're ever trying to make a very small adjustment like this and just sliding it down, yeah, use those numbers at the top. It gives you a nice big display of the volume right at the top there if you're making some of those really small, finite changes, especially on a smaller device like this 11-inch iPad that I'm using here. So is this going to change the world? Well, maybe for some folks, if you are very much reliant on things like multi-stereo out plugins and side chaining, and that's what you use in your music, then this is great. Uh, and this means that maybe you'll continue your Logic Pro subscription. If you haven't checked out Logic Pro at all and you're wondering what all the fuss is about, I've got a heap of videos right here on the channel going through all the Logic Pro features through version 1, version 2, 2.1, 2.2. We are two years into the Logic Pro on iPad experience and it is getting better and better. Uh, it is my DAW of choice. I still have a soft spot for GarageBand. Don't worry, that won't be going anywhere. This channel is still going to have GarageBand content because it's my happy place. It's my comfort zone. But you can't argue with the features and the tools that we have here in Logic Pro. And now, after the big update, even those things that were introduced with the update that weren't working are now working, which is a great thing. Once again, check out all the other videos that I have here on Logic Pro for iPad linked down in the description. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Hit the like button if you liked it, and I'll see you on the next one.